Have a look at the general formula for the sine functions y equals a sine x plus q. The parent function is y equal to sine x, so it has an a value of 1 and a q value of 0. The general formula for the cosine functions is y equals a cos x plus q. The parent function's formula is y equal to cos x, so it also has an a value of 1 and a q value of 0. First, we will look at how changing the a values changes the graph. To make our investigation easier, we will keep the q value at 0. Then we can be sure that any changes we see in the graphs are caused by the changes we make to the a value. We'll begin by making a equal to 2 in both the sine and the cosine functions. So now we have y equal to 2 sine x and y equal to 2 cos x. Be careful here. 2 sine x means 2 times the whole of sine x and 2 cos x means 2 times the whole of cosine x. You can't separate the angle x from the sine or cos ratio. What effect do you think the 2 is going to have on each graph? How will the 2 change the parent graph? By increasing the a value to 2 in the formula, we have changed every y value for the sine and cosine functions by a factor of 2. One way to look at this is to say that each y value on the graphs will be 2 times bigger. So we can multiply them by 2 to find the y values for the new graphs. Let's start with the parent graph of the sine function. I'm going to choose the point here at 90 degrees and 1. Remember that this was a maximum value for the parent graph. So this y value of 1 will become 2. We can plot the point 92 here. Do you see that the new point is twice as high above the x-axis as the point on the parent graph is? So this point has already made the maximum of the new graph something greater than 1. Let's look at another point on the parent graph. What about this point, where x is 30 degrees and y is 0,5? If we double that y value, we get a half times 2, which is 1. So let's plot that point. This is also twice as far from the x-axis as the point on the parent graph. What will happen at this point on the x-axis, where the y-value is 0? Well, all points are multiplied by 2 in the same way. But at 0, it doesn't look like it has moved because 2 times 0 is just 0. And we can plot this point at 180, 0. Let's look at a negative value of y now. At 270 degrees, y is negative 1. This was the minimum value of the parent graph. If we multiply by 2, we get negative 2. So we can plot the point 270 and negative 2. Here, multiplying by 2 has caused a decrease. But the new point is still twice as far from the x-axis as the point on the parent graph. If we continue to take each point on the parent graph and multiply it by 2, we will create the graph of y equals 2 sine x. It's as if the parent graph has been stretched vertically up and down to form the new graph. We can say that it has a vertical stretch factor of 2. Now, let's look at the parent graph of y equals cosine x. Changing all the y values of the parent graph by a factor of 2 changes the parent graph to the graph y equals 2 cosine x. Have you noticed that the cos graph has stretched in the same way that the sine graph stretched? Let me show you. The graph is stretched down and stretched up away from the x-axis. All the y values for this part of the graph will be positive. So multiplying by 2 will double the y values, causing the graph to stretch vertically upwards. But because these y values are all negative here, multiplying by 2 will stretch the graph vertically downwards like this. Now let's compare the two parent graphs with the new graphs we've plotted. 
What do you notice about the maximum and minimum values of the new graphs? The maximum value has changed from 1 to 2 on this graph, and on this graph the maximum has also changed from 1 to 2. So, the maximum on both graphs has been changed from 1 to 2. The minimum value has changed from negative 1 to negative 2. So the range of both graphs is from negative 2 to positive 2. The amplitude of the graph is the maximum distance away from the x-axis, so both graphs have an amplitude of 2. Let's compare the x-intercepts of both sets of graphs. What do you notice about the points at which each graph cuts the x-axis? They have stayed the same because 2 times 0 is still 0. What you will find is that if we choose an a value greater than 1, both the parent graphs stretch by a factor of a away from the axis.